Everyone is talking about it, so we probably should cover it. This min swap vulnerability that was discovered by the Wing Riders team. Yeah, yeah, I gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get. Hey everyone, I'm Peter Bue. If this is your first time here, please consider giving me that thumbs up, click subscribe and click the notification bell and you get more great Cardano related content. Now the MinSwap team have put out a post-mortem blog post all about the vulnerability that was discovered on their smart contract in their liquidity pool. And I'll take you through the updates around this, but let me go back a little bit and talk about what the situation is, what's happened. So a little bit of a timeline so that you know how we got to this point. So first off, we really want to avoid situations like this. This is another hack of 50 million worth of assets on the Solana network. So these type of vulnerabilities and exploits are what we want to avoid in general across any DeFi ecosystem. And seeing this appear, and you see these every single day, is really, really scary for other investors to come into the DeFi ecosystem and put their money in there because they know that one day they could get hacked like this and be completely drained. Now, the MinSwap team a few days ago, about five days ago, actually open sourced all of their code. So open sourcing your code means that you can put your code online and let anyone else look at it. And in that process, people can contribute to that smart contract that they put up online verify it, audit it themselves and contribute to it and be a part of the MinSwap community. Open source is something I am absolutely proud about. I've been working in the open source communities around content management systems for the last 15 years of my life. And contributing to open source projects is absolutely a fantastic thing to do. Now in opening that up, we did notice a few days later that the MinSwap DEX was going under maintenance and uh, maintenance for longer and longer periods of time. Now. This wasn't unusual. There were performance issues, so they'd had to take the decks down to increase upgrade servers and whatnot, and then re reinitiate things, and then people could use the decks again. But this maintenance lasted for almost 50 hours. So it was a continuously long maintenance period. So people started to get worried about it and saying, oh God, is this a rug pull? Something's going on seriously here. But the fact that the code was open sourced a few days earlier kind of led me to believe that something was discovered, something was found. And a couple of tweets throughout the, the past few days from other teams kind of led to the idea of a vulnerability was discovered. So this is the blog post that the MinSwap team have put out that gives us a little bit of an idea of what exactly happened. In short, they found a vulnerability that let someone withdraw all the liquidity from the smart contract and move it anywhere else they wanted. Now, this same vulnerability was used to upgrade their smart contract and move everyone's liquidity over. And that process is happening at the moment. And because it's taking such a long time, their maintenance window was uh, over 50 hours, like I said, they are extending that LBE events, that NFT booster event, so that uh, people can uh, get those extra rewards from their uh, providing liquidity. Now, it's unfortunate that this all happened in the time that uh, ADA's price is at uh, currently $1.12, $1.12 USD, so there may be impermanent loss incurred, and I will be doing a detailed video about that, so please subscribe to the channel to find out more. Now, the rest of the article breaks everything down even further. So all the funds were safe. So they managed to actually block all transactions because at the moment they're using their batch system, they're controlling that entire process. So they could shut all that down. It wasn't a decentralized process. They can shut all that down and ensure that no transactions were moving out in or out of their network. So that was the key and important thing there. Now I did highlight quite a lot here in this article. So there was a, a, a quite a bit to go through. The vulnerability allowed anyone to mint duplicate pool NFT tokens. So essentially what this means is that when you go to a DEX, you can create any liquidity pool that you want. So you can go to Sunday Swap, Mint Swap, whatever it is, and create a trading pair of whatever token. So I can go in and make my own liquidity pool of Min and Ada. That isn't a part of that main pool that everyone's using for the yield farming. So in this case, I could have duplicated all the pool tokens and then made a brand new liquidity pool and then sold everything in that liquidity pool. 
meaning that I would have driven the price down of Min or ADA and then wiped everyone else's assets because of that linked value. Now, like I said a little bit earlier, it's very fortunate that that exploit was there so that the MinSwap team could actually use the exploit, recreate everything and move all the assets to the new pool. That way our funds are now safe within that new smart contract where that isn't possible. Now the team did want to clarify that, that this isn't possible in the new smart contract. They cannot migrate to liquidity, nor should anyone be able to do that in a smart contract. No one else should be able to control your funds. There were some tweets online saying, this is quite strange. How on earth can they do this unless it was coded into the smart contract? So it wasn't done intentionally. It was a vulnerability that even their auditors had missed. And if we go down a little bit further, they actually noted that where they and their auditors, Twig, didn't see this particular vulnerability within the smart contract. Now, because Cardano-based smart contracts, Haskell Plutus-based smart contracts are so new, the experience that people have in regards to auditing these contracts is very little. It's such a new ecosystem that everyone is learning at the moment. Now the resolution plan for the team going forward, they're making new pool creation permissioned. So now you can't just go in and create a brand new liquidity pool. So this is a temporary measure. So they'll only allow the pools that exist at the moment, or there may be a process that you need to go through in regards to actually creating a pool. So they know that a pool is created safely. So unfortunately that's the case, but it will ensure that if there's any further vulnerabilities like this, they don't get exploited. Now, this isn't ideal in that whole decentralized ethos and uh, idea of decentralization, but it is progress towards that step. In version two of the DEX, we should see a much more decentralized and trustless model that they will be bringing out. Now, they have mentioned that they're working with a new Haskell security firm. We don't know who that is or any of the details around it just yet. Now, it's really fortunate that the person that found this didn't act maliciously and acted as part of the Cardano community to have this patched immediately and as quickly as possible. So it's really good that the Cardano ecosystem is working together like this to ensure a stronger and more resilient ecosystem. Now, the MinSwap team did mention a little bit here about open sourcing their smart contracts and exposing that vulnerability. But I think building, developing in an open source way is definitely the key way to do things like this. Of course, there's always that first mover advantage. And at the moment, everyone's quite closed knit about their smart contracts and not wanting to share at the moment because having that code really means that you have that advantage to get to market and get all that liquidity because liquidity is key on any exchange, centralized or decentralized. Now, I really hope in the future as more DEXs and more projects launch that we will see more open source code so that the community itself can audit it Myself, probably not. I'm not an experienced Plutus or Haskell developer, but it's really good to see that the community jumping on board and helping out in this way. Now, the full credit goes to the Wing Riders team. The Wing Riders team were the ones that found the vulnerability and alerted the MinSwap team about it so that it could be patched. Now, they got rewarded with a bug bounty from the uh, Dow Treasury as a result. So thank you so much to the Wing Riders team. Now, if you don't know about Wing Riders, they're a decentralized exchange and platform that's building out by Vacuum Labs. Vacuum Labs are the team that built all of the firmware code for your Ledger Nanos. They've also done the first version of the Euroi wallet, and they are actually the creators of Ada Lite, one of the very first no, the first light wallet in the Cardano ecosystem back in 2018. So if you were around in the ecosystem back then from the early days buying ADA, you would have known what ADA Lite is and what Vacuum Labs have contributed to the Cardano ecosystem. Now they're releasing their new version of their DEX, Testnet DEX version 1.1 on Friday. So you should be able to see it really soon. If you haven't seen any demos of this yet, please check out the videos in the top right hand corner there. There's a few there where I go through the NewFi wallet. Uh, I have an interview with the NewFi team as well and going through a video walkthrough of how to actually use their decks. It's a very nice experience. 
Furthermore, you'll be able to sign smart contracts with your Ledger Nano or Trezor hardware device as well. So they're the first decks to do this. Really helps when you actually write the code for it as well. Now the community support behind MinSwap has been absolutely huge. The acknowledgement to the Wingriders team as well, as well as all of the support that the MinSwap team have been getting to get through this vulnerability issue, have things patched and work through it. Now the Sunday Swap team are very aware of how much pressure and stress there is to release stuff like this. So it's absolutely fantastic to see multiple different DEXs collaborating and ensuring that everything is good in that respect. So as of right now, the MinSwap DEX is still under maintenance. So I'm, I believe the liquidity is still being migrated over from the initial smart contract over to the new one. So that's still happening at the moment. So if you go into the farm page at the moment, still under maintenance. So we're still waiting for that to happen so that everything can move out. What will happen after this? I am not sure. Will people be moving out their liquidity at this point and selling? There was supposed to be that move anyway, and just be careful and be warned that moving and selling off your liquidity at this point, because price have, has differed quite a lot in regards to ADA and MIN at the moment, you may incur a permanent loss. And like I said, I will be doing videos about this in the future to explain it a lot better. Now, if you haven't tried out Wing Riders yet, highly encouraged that you do again links are in the top right hand corner or in the show notes down below have a little play they'll be releasing their mainnet version of their decks very very soon now on behalf of the kadana community i'd just like to thank the minswap team for working tirelessly through this process i can't imagine how stressful it would have been to get through patch everything keep us all up to date and protect all of our assets and thank you so much to the wing riders team as well for reporting the vulnerability and acting in the best interest of the Kadana community in general. It's good to see different DEXs not competing in this way, but helping each other in terms of creating a better and safer ecosystem on Kadana. Now, if you like this type of content, please consider giving me that thumbs up, click subscribe, and click on the notification bell, and hear more from me soon. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.